All right, let's start part B of this examination. Let's start with question 29, okay? Oops. All right, so what do we have here? Um, we have the derivative of a function. Oh. Question 29. We have the derivative of a function that is x minus a times x minus b times x minus c okay a smaller than b smaller than c and the question is which of the following could be the graph of f so we know that f has f prime has three zero right uh, x equals a is a zero x equals b is a zero uh, b and x equals c is a zero and all of them uh, there's no power right here you don't have like a square or something like that so that means that uh, the graph crosses the axis i could actually I actually i don't know where the y i don't know where the y equation is but i can graph it right if you expand everything right here you're gonna have some x cubed and then plus some other stuff the leading coefficient is one so uh, it goes like that all right the end behavior is like this. This is all a recall from. We we've covered that. Like recall this here of uh, end behavior of a polynomial function, right? So this is going to be a, b, and c. And so I know that my derivative is negative here, positive here, negative here, and positive here, right? And therefore I know that my function is going to be decreasing, increasing, decreasing, and increasing. Um, so I'm expecting, of course, A only has two local extrema, so you have to eliminate A and D. E has too many local extrema, so it's between B and C, and it's B. 30. Okay, the area of the region in the first quadrant in close by. Okay, so I um, already graphed this in my, I, I put it in my calculator. It's too long already in my calculator. Okay, so you know the y equals, oops, this is really not good. Anyway, I don't care about past that. This is y equals 3x, and then you have like y equals x right here, right? So I need this, uh, I need this intersection and then what they're asking me is this area right there right so this is gonna be easy um, I put this function into y1 I'm gonna show you and I put this one into y2 already okay so what I want to do is sum from 0 to well what I need y1 minus y2 dx in my calculator okay so it's a calculator problem um, here's my calculator um, can you see it let me see, bring it down right here. Here we go. Um, I think it should be okay here. Um, let me do that. Uh. Okay, right here. Um, so, actually, I've already, I've also looked at another function before. Uh, let me not graph this. Let me graph this, and let me graph this. Okay, now, uh, window, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna take between zero and pi, because pi is where it hits zero, right? So I know I'm way before that, between zero and pi. And it's, um, um, I'm gonna take negative three for the, y mean and 3 for the y max, this is the amplitude, right, so we'll see, and let's look at the graph, here we go, okay, and we want this point right here, we want this point, so it's second calc, and it's intersect 5, and that's the first curve, yes, and that's the second, yes, and I'm not guessing, one point, one, so you see right here this section, you gotta circle that. One, seven, zero, one, two, one. Okay, so, all right, math, nine, zero is the lower bound. One point, 
one seven zero one two one I think uh, variable so it's uh, y1 minus y2 right y1 was on top y1 was on top it's a cosine it's on top it's always a top minus the lower the bottom okay uh, y2 and dx over here okay enter 2.077 and that's C so this is only a calculator problem and we found 2.077 something so it is C okay next one 31 31 what's going on here um, F goes like that, right? So you have this is B, this is A right here, B, A. And they're looking at this area. This is the x axis and the y axis. Um, so, yeah, the first one is true, right? Uh, the sum from 0 to A of F of x dx does represent A. Yeah, correct. Now, the second one. Oh, this is tricky. This is tricky. This is what I did. Look at the function f. Let me, uh, let me. Okay, you see, this is a one-to-one -one function, right? Therefore, it has an inverse. Let's check out the graph of the inverse. Um, so, for the graph of the inverse, you just flip the x and the y axis, basically, right? So, b this time would be right here, and a would be right there, right? Oops you know you flip x y becomes y x so uh, 0 b becomes b 0 and a 0 becomes 0 a right here and that's and that's a graph of f minus 1 and indeed indeed uh, a is also a is also sum from 0 to b of f minus 1 of x dx uh, C, well, C makes no difference. You know, this is called a mute variable. You can write whatever you want right here. This is the same as sum from 0 to B of F minus 1 of Y, dy. And again, you can call it whatever you want, except F, okay, because it's already used for that. Um, but if you want to call it from some 0 to B of F minus 1 of T, dt, it's the same, okay? So it seems to be A, B, and C, so I would say... I would say um, B. All right, let's move on. Thirty-two horizontal asymptotes. Now this. <coughs> sorry, this is uh, PC problems. Um, two minus e to the 1 over x over 2 plus e to the 1 over x so horizontal asymptote basically you're wondering you're wondering this right you're wondering this this is really not difficult uh, don't be afraid of it check it out um, if x approaches plus or minus infinity where does 1 over x goes, right? If x gets very, very large or very, very small, 1 over x approaches 0, right? So what do you have at the top? Check it out. So um, the, this is 0, so that's e to the 0, which is 1. And this is, again, e to the 0, which is 1. And so the limit is 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 1, which is 1 third. So I think that the asymptote is y equals 1 third, which is c, right? Okay. Uh, next one, thirty-three. Oh yeah, I've already I've also entered this equation in my calculator because it's a pain to do that. So let's take the calculator. Let's go to y equals. So this time I don't want to plot this. Actually, I'm done with this. So how about I delete it? Okay, let's delete that. Clear. Let's delete that. Clear. But I do want to plot this. Okay. 
uh, this is the uh, function they're giving me, right? Cosine x divided by ln of x plus 1. Now, um, uh, my window, they say on 210. So let me get 210. As for the y, I have no idea. Um, maybe negative 5, 5, we'll see. If this is too small, we'll enlarge it. If this is too big, we'll make it smaller. Okay, oops, I don't want that. I want... I need to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit smaller. Actually, it's too big. So y min y max. I'm gonna go to negative two two. Okay, here we go. Let's look at the graph. All right. Remember, this is a derivative. Okay. So the derivative is negative here, positive there, negative here. So negative, positive, negative. So right here, the function should. Uh, decreases and then the function should increases and the function should decreases right uh, decreases right here increases right there decreases right here so always increases or decreases one is false has a relative mean not at an endpoint yes right because it decreases and increases and decreases there's a relative mean not at an endpoint and a three point of inflection yes okay remember here let me actually go right here quickly jot down this graph goes, goes like that I think uh, from going from 2 to 10 goes like that uh, uh, uh. all right let me see yeah <laughs> okay not very pretty it's fine for what we want to do um, so um, this is a derivative right this is y equals f prime of x so f prime itself is decreasing f prime okay not the function so I know my function f f is going to be decreasing increasing and decreasing because f prime is negative positive and negative okay but also let's look at if f prime increases or decreases right here f prime decreases then f prime increases then f prime decreases and then it increases so you have one two three inflection points okay be careful what you're reading into f prime so uh, two and three are correct and one is not so the answer should be d um, uh oh you know what actually 34 uh, we haven't covered that so move on 35 35 what is this With respect to time t the rate at which is increasing at x equals power 4 is k times the rate at which e okay so they're giving us a function y equals sine x sine sine square of x but there's a time t involved the weight rate at which x increases. x is actually a function of t okay x is a function of t there so if you do dy dt what you're gonna do be careful right here so take the power down reduce the power by one and then derive the inside function now the inside function is sine x but i'm gonna derive that with respect to t right so it is cosine x dx dt okay be careful with that so cosine x dx dt what are they saying the rate at which this so this rate right here that's a rate that's a rate at which the function increases um, at x equals power 4 so I know I will have to take x equals power 4 this rate is k time the rate at which x increases this rate is k time the rate at which x increases the rate at which x increases that's the rate of x right okay so here's the equation right um, and I'm at x equals power 4 so what do we have right here we have 2 sine pi over 4 cosine pi over 4 dx dt equals k 
times dx dt. Now, of course, this is not a function of dx dt, so that goes away, right? Goes away. Okay, starting to mess up. Um, so what do we have? So we have 2, 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 equals k. Uh, this is 1 half right here, right? So 2 times 1 half equals k, k equals 1, which is c. Okay, this is not the easiest question, okay? I have to say this is not the easiest question. All right, I, I'll stop right here.